Hello everyone, how you all doing? So in this video I'm going to show you how you can create your own uh, cards for card productions. Some of these are just personal techniques, personal ideas, how you can prepare your own cards. And this technique is not really handy for all card productions, okay? So you have to be careful and just try it on and see if it works for you. Now the common procedure to prepare gimme cards. No, it's not gimme cards, it's just regular cards, but they have to be soft. So in some cases, okay, not all cases. What I recommend you to do is just soft the cards like this, mainly from side to side because of the back palming. Okay. When it is just for one card, you don't have to prepare anything. But when it is for a big chunk, for a big pile, about 10 or 20 cards, it is better to have your own setup. So they have to be quite soft, you know, and regular standard bicycle playing cards, most likely for big quantity, they are going to be too stiff. So they sell special cards in magic stores, you know, for card productions. But some of them, they have uh, black borders and other ones, they have flesh color. Now, whatever you want to use, I prefer black color because black background here is the most uh, common situation and what I see most magicians use. But you want to use, you know, skin color over here on the edge for the corners so they don't see the white borders. It is going to be okay. It's going to be uh, good as well. But it's not going to be as easy to find the right color to paint the edges of the cards. So what I've been doing in some of the card productions that I've been doing in this channel is just removing the paper because all playing cards, the bicycle playing cards mainly, they have uh, three layers. They have the paper in the front, in the face, and paper in the back. In the middle, in the center, it has a thick piece of uh, cardboard or paper. So it is uh, three layers, okay? I'm just removing the layer from the back. This one doesn't matter. This is the flimsy one. You can get rid of it or you can save it for double backs, you know, cards. But over here, I'm gonna keep the two layers, the center one and the paper one. But I need to do a little bit of preparation right now. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna fold it in half, okay? So I'm gonna use two pieces of sandpaper. And those are the number 220. This is a little thicker, okay? the grains are a little thicker and this is 400 this is to polish the cards okay but i'm gonna show you that in a minute so i have two pieces i'm gonna start using that 220 so i need to start removing the roughness of the card now when i do this i only go one way do not go back because then you're gonna fold the card you most likely will end up creating creases okay and be careful with the nails so you can use or wear gloves if you want. Okay, so that's half of it. Then turn it over. So that's it. At least I already removed the excessive residues, you know, the roughness of the card. And the sheet of paper is so you can protect the surface, okay? Then when you finish, use the number 400. The 400 is really, really fine uh, sandpaper and do the same. I already did half of it. Now let's do the other half. Now at this point, the playing card, it is really, really smooth, okay? And this is gonna be good for fanning like I already did over here. I already have nine cards. And when you fan, it fans okay. It's not that um, stiff or that rough. So you can do uh, decent fans, okay? I didn't even use fanning powder. You have to do this for each and every card you're going to use, okay, in the performance. Now, like I said, using this technique for all card productions, it is not convenient. But it is good, at least for back palming when you are producing a large quantity, okay? Between 10 and 30 cards. So once you're already finished with this playing card, okay? Just make sure it is really soft, really smooth. 
Next, there are two things you can do. You can paint the edges of the card using a rectangle shape or an hexagon shape. Okay, that's gonna be up to you. I personally like more the hexagon shape. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how you can do one of these. If not, you can just do the rectangle. But make sure that thickness of the border it is at least one centimeter. You can do the same if you're using your regular playing cards. But the reason I'm painting, let me show you over here. I think I have one. Okay, this one. The reason I'm painting over here, you can tell the difference. The edge as well. Is because when you have a large amount of playing cards, in case you are back palming the cards, some of the cards may end up being moved, okay? They may end up showing right in front of the fingers, okay? As you can see. So the black border is going to help. Otherwise, if you keep them just white, it may get exposed with the background you're using or whatever color you're using. So it is better just to keep all the edges black. In this shape, the hexagon shape, I think it is the, the one that looks better. And what I did, it was just cutting a little triangle. So I ended up cutting about two centimeters from the edge to the end of the triangle. So I can go up from here to here, right on the center, and go both ways. So you can come up with this triangle shape. That's what I'm gonna be using as a guidance. I'm gonna use a Sharpie, a thick point okay and just go one way you don't have to be extremely perfect it doesn't really matter it's not even that important okay so you already have one side done do the same for the uh, other side as well just apply pressure just color it. Now because it is a thick point, you have to be careful not to do a lot of cards uh, in a row because it's gonna smell really bad. Then I'm gonna use the straight edge over here on the playing card. About one centimeter once again. And I try not to play pressure over here because it's still fresh. And that's it, you already have an hexagon shape. And you can create as many as you want, like 10, 20, but be careful not to paint the edge of the cards directly with a marker. Just paint the back, and it's gonna smear uh, the ink towards the other side, or at least the edge. Because if you paint over here the edge directly with a marker, you will have to get a napkin and then remove the excessive ink you know, so you don't get a stain on the fingers, like I just did right now. But it doesn't matter how hard you try to clean it, it's gonna get a smear on your fingers, so just be careful and just paint the back, not the sides. Now that is important because when you have large quantities, you may end up showing white color on the sides of the cards when you have that big packet. So by using this method it's gonna be okay. Now the last thing you can do if you want is just add a little bit of a fanning powder on the on top of the paper and just uh, check it up right on top, both sides. So the cards they become really smooth and remove the excessive powder by just rifling or spreading, also by doing some fur shuffles so the powder can get into the material of the paper, okay? And they can fan pretty well. Now, I didn't use any fanning powder. They do spread pretty well, okay? So I don't really have to go through, but in case you have really old playing cards, the fanning powder is gonna help big deal. One important issue that I came across is when you paint a playing card, don't use uh, a spray paint, because the spray paint it's gonna make the car really rough 
it's gonna feel like sandpaper. So I'd rather use the marker instead of spray to paint these cards. So that's it. This is gonna be okay for back palming. I have 10 cards over here and notice it is really thin and it's not really that noticeable. And when you use a black background, make sure you are at least 15 feet away from the audience. 10 feet, it is okay depending on the performance or the cut production you're doing, but staying 15 feet away from the audience or more is better, okay? From 15 feet and higher, that's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be more difficult for audience to see the corners over here. But in some performances, you have to paint the whole back, okay? As I already explained in other card productions. So the last point I want to mention is that when you do card productions, it's better if you use a fancy fabric on the floor with some designs. So when you finish the routine, you can just pick up the fabric instead of picking up the cards. There are several ways. There is no one specific rule how you can reach into some extra cards. In case you're wearing a sweatshirt or any suit, no, I don't have a suit, and I don't have any specific setup because I'm not really too much into card production but you can have it over here you can just use a pin and hold it over there you can also use a pin on your belt over here the point is try not to bend the arm to reach into the higher pockets over here or over here that's too obvious you don't want to bend the arm it's better if you keep it stretched now I'm wearing cargo pants the cargo pants they have pockets on the side over here, down here. They are a little higher than the knee. So I can reach into the pocket and just get an extra card. Let's say I'm, I already finished with one of the productions. Then I go into this hand and I do some card production with this other hand because my right hand is already going against the audience. They don't really see. I'm reaching over here on the pocket. And I already have them into a column, okay? And then you can go ahead and go into some extra routines. Now the way you're gonna be end up reaching the cards that you're hiding, that's gonna be depending on the production that you're doing. There is not a specific rule how you're gonna end up approaching the card, just make it natural. Now in case you have it over here, right under the coat, make sure it looks relaxed and justifiable because this is a relaxed situation, it doesn't look suspicious. In case you're producing or doing something with this hand, you're already loading this card into this other hand as well. Okay? And once you already palm the cards, you can do so many things. All of the pockets over here. But I never like when magicians, they put them into the, you know, the belt or some situations that you have to fold the arm because that looks suspicious. So that's gonna be it. And I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial.